Sweet. So he took a left at the roundabout, past the Chinese supermarket, which is big, and you'll want to go there. And we're down the main road, headed towards the French Bridge School. Hong Hien. First word. Hong Hien. And the next one, a toll. That's primary. Usually, if people are talking about what grade they're in, they'll say, Fa Nung, Fa Song, like first grade, second grade, right? And then if they want to say they're in secondary school, they'll say, Ma, really like a puppy. We've got T minus one hour until the live stream starts this morning. So it's got to be quick. So on that topic of first grade, second grade, it'll go up to Fa Hope, Fa Hope, so the sixth grade, and then they'll say, one in until Maho. So first to six is elementary, six to uh, seven to to eight, or seven to twelfth grade would be secondary in English, right? The seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth grade, but they say secondary. One to six, meaning seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. If you asking somebody, like a kid, you want to ask a kid, what are they? What grade they're in, you would usually say, Kian Fodai, and which would mean like, because you know, you probably know, assuming you're assuming they're either in elementary or they're in secondary school. You can ask multiple ways. You can say, Kian Fidai, and they'll tell you, okay, what year of school they're in? What year are you studying? Or you can say, which grade are you in? Elementary grade? Kian Fodai, Kian Monai, so that would be secondary. Which secondary level are you studying? Not something we say in English, is it? <laughs> but yeah, that's how you'd ask. So I'd ask a little kid, oh, Kian Fodai, you, grade are you in? We made it to the market. And if you go down that road, I'm pretty sure, yes, that road, we have our market over here. There's actually nothing for sale right now, which is surprising. At night, they have the whole street market oh they got stuff over here Thirty thousand, thirty-five thousand, so a dollar fifty or so for whole chicken thigh and leg and everything so very good deal dunkai is slow cooked chicken very nice walk it's an experience to walk across the bridge it really is because the motorcycles go on this path up here i'll show you when we get over there all right so as you can see, motorcycles go down here, but if you're walking, you go down here. It's really cool walking at night too. It's very dark and you just see the silhouettes of the mountains, the stars, silhouette of the riverbanks and the houses. Give off just a little bit of light. Barely see camera can't really capture that, but you can see a little bit mist on the mountains. Temple bridge. After you come off the bridge over here, you can come down this road, take a left, it'll go all the way down. It keeps going. But there's lots of stuff along that road. That's actually where I can go for my house. But that's quite a ways down there. If you take a right over here, you go towards the historic center. I'd give you street names, but there aren't any. So you got to go by landmarks. And, uh, I'd recommend staying around this area, though. I'd highly recommend staying around this area, either on the other side of the bridge or right down this way. You're right outside this historic zone. You're literally five to ten minute walk. It's nothing. And quite honestly, the historic zone is nice if you want to pay extra for everything. And it's not really that different from any other local town. And... It's a nice area, but it's touristy, and so it, it comes with price. So you're right outside that. Prices are kind of low, low prices. It's really nice. See if we can find a coffee. So I'm sure there's a lot to We're just like one block away from everything at this point. Once we get up, up to right about here, there's the temple. And then right after the temple, you have that corner that has lots of, stuff. Lots of little restaurants and bars. There used to be nothing over here. When I came here nine years ago, and now they built up everything around where all the guest houses were. Backpackers. It just used to be all backpackers right over here. 
these cheapers right out, you know, just like right around this temple that's way up on the hill. So all the backpacks you see on this side, cheaper nine years ago. And it starts zones right on the other side. Now things have started to spread out. Started to move this way. And truthfully, you can easily live along these, these roads outside of the historic zone and be very comfortable, very happy, very convenient spot. I wouldn't really want to live in the historic zone. I want to stay outside of the main area where you get the local feel, but you're not too far away to go enjoy the fun stuff in the city center. And you're outside of the city center, so you don't have to deal with the Lauren stuff. Extra high prices, lots of people. All right, I'm gonna go see what they got over there. I've been hoping that maybe they have like a uh, vegetable or meat one because I miss that a lot. They got meat, dumpling. I haven't had this in ages. So I was in Shanghai. I'm gonna get a uh, meat one. Oh, yeah, you got a throw bow. Oh, yeah, you got a tie bow. You got a tie bow, man. Oh, what a guess is what we're getting this morning. Good coffee. No, 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 a little over a bottle. Very little bit. Awesome. See if we can find a chapter. I'm still giving Chinese food a chance. I had good experiences with Chinese food in China. Just because we had one god awful experience here doesn't mean they're all good. Bad. Now, I'm not putting too much hope into these buns because, for one, it's uh, just a plain meat bun. You didn't have the spicy bun, which I usually get in China. It's regular. I got one vegetable. So let's see how it's vegetable one is. Uh, they can tend to be a bit dry, like the, the bread for the these buns. No. These meat bun vegetable buns. Yeah. The, the bread can be kind of dry. But if they do it really well, then like, oh, the inside is just steaming it nice and it's they've done it really well then the juices of the inside has got into the bun a bit or at least there's enough to make it not too dry i know the tea eggs were a staple of mine as well every morning i used to get spicy two spicy pork buns two vegetable buns and like four to six tea eggs i'd eat those on the train the shuttle bus when I had a long commute. Otherwise, I'd eat those before work when I went to my other school. That was my breakfast food. Seated with the talking machine. But we succeeded in a language mission. A lot of you won't know who this is, but I'm putting this in the video anyway. This is he's one of those language learners I used to watch on YouTube all the time. And he, he studied so many different languages and shared them. And he was all about just getting out there and leveling up your language. I love, I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z. I grew up, you know, playing video games like everybody. So, yeah, I always liked that kind of way to refer to it. Go get your experience points. Go level up out there. That's how you learn. I was nervous when I was about to talk to him. I was still Chinese for two. I spoke here and there conversations. I was down south. I spoke to some Chinese people, but we kind of lived in China for eight, nine years, man. So I'm rusty. It's nerve wracking, but it's one of those things where you know that if you just use it, you'll keep it fresh enough that then when you really want to bring it back to you, like full fluency, you can do that by spending some time in the country, right? And I came to Laos, it took some time. I never was super fluent in Laos, but. It took me about six months. I've never been in a loud environment before, but I'm studying and using it overseas, and then finally getting here, it took about six months. We're back. Now, let's get some eggs. I need eggs. And... I've been looking for this. 
I've been looking for this all over. I don't cook with vegetable oil. It's poison. It's processed, it's manufactured poison. It's not made with vegetables. There's no such thing. And it's poison. So you want to use real things from nature to cook. Animal fats, coconut milk, things occur naturally. So we can we can fry fish, we can stir fry eggs with it. If you want to say I'm not good at math, you can say Boking leg. I'm not good at numbers. At least I sorted out some food for the live stream. I'm always so hungry. We got some bout it. We got the two bout it, and we got the tea egg. We'll give you guys a little taste test. And that's really easy to find. And if there's any Chinese viewers out there, Chinese speakers, there you go. Come to Luang Prabang. It's very easy for you. Everybody speaks Chinese too. Oh, I want fruit. You want some fruit? I'm going to be so full. I'm going to be a nice farmer carry walk home. You guys do what farmer carries are? It's one of my go-to exercises. Load up each side. You can use a, what do you call them? You can either you can use free weights, you can use plates, you can use whatever, or you can use the whole thing that's like a you use for squats and deadlifts, like the whole thing that you put plates on, just weights in your hand, walking or over your head. Well, extremely effective exercise. For those of you interested in Lao, if you want to say one of each, the way to use each in Lao is the word La, La. So just a neutral tone, La. Then to say like thing as in a general thing, you could say Yang, Yang La, which would mean each thing. And then you put how many you want. For one, you say Yang La An. But if you're saying two things, you could say Yang La Som An. Explain this right. We'll have to go back and look at it. We try that again. So if you want to say, I want one of each, I want two of each, I want three of each thing. So the word for thing in this situation is yang. It, it's another miscellaneous classifier, yang. I talked to you un before miscellaneous classifier. But yang is more of like uh, for like kind, as in the word, this kind of thing, kind type, miscellaneous. So you're going to say which, I asked her how much the dragon fruit was. She said it was 35,000 per kilogram. I asked her how much the, the Asian pears were. She said 40 per kilogram. And then I said, ow. Remember I taught you how to order something? We are always gonna use ow. I'll take ow, one kilo of each. I need both hands. That's your lesson for today. See you guys in the next video. My traps and my shoulders are burning. Complete this workout. <laughs> Early morning training session. I lied. We're back. Very end of the video. Trying the Chinese buns. Snow bao. So we, the, the meat bun is called rope bao. Is it in the spicy pork? Is it in the regular pork? Salty, same thing. This might be bread. First good today. Wow. And cheap. Tea eggs. Yum. All right, let's see this video. <laughs> see you next one. Live streaming.